Act three, scene one, with the most famous soliloquy of all time. All right, here's a brief overview of act three. When Rosencrantz and Guildenstern report back to Claudius that they have no explanation for Hamlet's strange behavior, Claudius decides to eavesdrop with Polonius on the meeting between Hamlet and Ophelia. Although Hamlet treats Ophelia irrationally, Claudius is suspicious of his behavior and makes plan, plans to send Hamlet to England. The players perform their drama in which the events portrayed with Hamlet's alterations almost duplicate the circumstances surrounding King Hamlet's death. Hamlet observes that Claudius is visibly upset by the play. When he leaves abruptly, Claudius confirms his guilt in the eyes of Hamlet and his friend Horatio. One out of concern for Hamlet's welfare, Queen Gertrude meets privately with her son in her chambers. Polonius, however, is eavesdropping behind a wall tapestry. Hamlet, Hamlet's rebukes cause Gertrude to cry out, and Polonius cries out as well, fearful for her welfare. Believing he has heard Claudius, Hamlet stabs through the tapestry, killing Polonius. That's in Act 3, Scene 4. Here is Act 3, Scene 1, and here is the brief synopsis of this scene. After Rosencrantz and Guildenstern report their failure, uh, Polonius places Ophelia where he and Claudius may secretly observe a meeting. Hamlet is at first courteous to Ophelia, but suddenly turns on her. He denies having loved her, asks where her father is, attacks womankind, and tells her she should enter a nunnery. This is, this is where Hamlet's pretty nasty to Ophelia here, and if you're going to write your paper about this, this would be a scene to look at. After Hamlet exits, Claudius decides that Hamlet's erratic behavior is not caused by love and announces a plan to send Hamlet on an embassy to England. Claudius is sent, wants to send Hamlet to his death here. <laughs> Polonius persuades Claudius to take no action until Gertrude talks with Hamlet after the play, which is scheduled for that evening. King, and, and can you by no drift of conference, management of conversation, get from him why he puts on this confusion? grating so harshly all his days of quiet with turbulent and dangerous lunacy. Why is Hamlet acting so wild and mad? He does confess he feels himself distracted, but from what cause a will by no means speak. Gildan's turn. Nor do we find him for to be sounded, but with a crafty madness keeps aloof when we would bring him on to some confession of his true state. Did he receive you well? Most like a gentleman, but with much forcing of his disposition. Uh, a figurative question, but of our demands most free in his reply. You know, not he's not questioning. Hamlet's kind of holding his cards here. Hamlet's not asking a lot of questions. He's being stingy with questions here, right? And then we're moving on. Uh, did you assay him, tempt him? Did you tempt him uh, to any pastime? Madam, it so fell out of that certain player's were overwrought, overtook on the way of, of these we told him, and there did seem in him a kind of joy to hear of it. They are here about the court, here's the players here, right? And as I think they have already ordered this night to play before him. Tis most true, and he beseeched me to entreat your majesties to hear and see the matter. With all my heart, here's Claudius, with all my heart, and it doth much content me to hear him so inclined, good gentlemen, give him a further edge, and drive his purpose into these delights. We shall, my lord. Sweet Gertrude, leave us too, for we have closely, secretly, this is secretly, sent for Hamlet hither, that he, as twere by accident, may hear affront Ophelia, uh, meet Ophelia face to face. So they, they want to find out why maybe this is the cause, and they're going to they're gonna look for themselves. We'll, we'll so bestow ourselves that... Seeing unseen, we may of their encounter frankly judge and gather by him as he is behaved, if it be the affliction of his love or no, that thus he suffers for. So they want to see for themselves now. I shall obey you, and for your part, Ophelia, I do wish that your good beauties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope your virtues will bring him to this wonted way again, to both your honors. Madam, I wish it may. Polonius, Ophelia, walk you here. Gracious, so please you, we will bestow ourselves. Read on this book. That show of such an exercise may color. Act of devotion may give a plausible hue. You know, turn your cheeks red, right? Uh, that show of your loneliness. We are off to blame in this. 
too much prove that with devotions, visage, and pious action, we do sugar over the devil himself. Claudius. Oh, tis too true, how smart a lash that speech doth give my conscience. The harlot's cheek, beautied with plastering art, is not more ugly to the thing that helps it. Then is my deed to my most painted word, O oh, heavy burden. I hear him coming. Let's withdraw, my lord. Hamlet here. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing end them. To die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache, and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wish, to die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. I there's the rub. What's Hamlet saying? You know, what what what, what am I going to do? He's really gnashing his teeth here. What am I going to do, right? Uh, right? What we have suffered of this motor coil must give us pause. That's the res there's the respect that makes calamity of so long life, makes living a long calamity. You know, what are we doing with our life here, right? What are we doing? What, what decisions do we make? What choices must give us pause? There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong. The proud man's contumely. The pangs of despised love. The law's delay. The insolence of office. And the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes. When he himself might his quietest make. The full discharge, illegal, you know, quiet is full discharge with a bare bodkin, a dagger. Um, who would fardels bear? Fardels, burdens, right? Bur burdens to grunt and sweat under a weary life. But that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born, whose region, no traveler returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to the others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. You know, think of this. Hamlet's, my conscience is keeping me from murder. He's not a murderer. He's the opposite of Hercules, right? It makes cow The more we think about action, our conscience makes cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought the color of thought, and enterprises of great pitch and moment would disregard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action, soft you now, the fair Ophelia, nymph in thy horizons, be all my sins remembered. All right, this moment here, the end of this famous soliloquy, and, and we'll go back and look at it a little bit. He's asking for, forgive me, be all my sins remembered. Forgive me for about how for, for how I'm about to treat Ophelia. He knows he's treating her horribly here, and it's on purpose. It's a choice. Why? Why does Hamlet choose this? We'll think of this, but let's go back and, and look at a few moments from the famous soliloquy here. Unlike Hamlet's first two major the first three major soliloquies, his fourth and uh, most famous speech seems to be governed by reason and not frenzied emotion. There's a reason here. He's not, think of this juxtaposed with ro what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Remember, that's our class. Like, what an ass. What a, you know, he, he's a little more measured here. Unable to do little but wait for completion of his plan to catch the conscience of the king, Hamlet sparks an internal philosophical debate on the advantages and disadvantages of existence and whether it is one's right to end his or her own life or their own life. You know, what do we do with life? It's is a really philosophical, and it's such a juxtaposed soliloquy with the last one. The last one was just, he was in a frenzy. This one is much more measured. Yet nothing anywhere in the speech relates to it to Hamlet's individual case. He uses the pronouns we and us, the indefinite who, the impersonal infinitive. He, spe he speaks explicitly of us all, what flesh is heir to, and what we suffer at the hands of time or fortune, which serves incidentally to indicate what for Hamlet is meant by to be, you know, to be, just to exist, right? We're going to suffer all these things here. Hamlet asks the question for all dejected souls, is it nobler to live miserably 
or to end one's sorrows with a single stroke? Do we just endure? Do we end it all? He knows that the answer would be undoubtedly yes if death were like a dreamless sleep. The rub or obstacle Hamlet faces is the fear of what dreams may come, the dread of something after death. Hamlet is well aware that suicide is condemned by the church as a mortal sin. Hamlet soliloquy is interrupted who is saying her prayers. Hamlet addresses her as nymph. That's the end. A courtly salutation common in the Renaissance. Some critics argue that Hamlet's greeting is strained and coolly polite, and his request that she remembers him in her prayers is sarcastic. However, and this is how I read this, I don't, I don't read this end here as sarcastic. Uh, Hamlet, emerging from his moment of intense personal reflection, generally implores a gentle and innocent affiliate to pr pray for him. So I think, you know, I think Hamlet is really sincere here with his, because he knows what he's about to do and what he's about, how he's about to treat Ophelia. But uh, he, he goes on in any way. You know, think, think of the, the to be or not to be. Is it nobler to suffer the, the slings and arrows or to take arms? What do we do? What are, what are the choices we have in life? To die, to sleep, uh, you know, what comes after to die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. If, if suicide, if death was just the great sleep and nothing, it wouldn't be so bad. But Hamlet knows the, the church, right, that it is uh, what comes after, what dreams may come, the mortar coil. That gives us pause to think, you know, there's the respect that makes this long life is nothing but suffering and misery. Uh, but we got to bear through it anyway. And, and you know, he, he's really at a middle here. This is one of the middle, this is the middle soliloquy, right? We have a couple after this. Uh, he's really in the middle of the wheel here, deciding what to do, right? The undiscovered country. So this is, this is one of the all-time famous soliloquies. There are notes and notes and notes scholarly articles written upon it you, you can look it all up uh we see he's at the middle here though he's at a, he's at the middle point and he's wondering what to do and and he's really gnashing in a philosophical way turning everything over much more measured than the early two so the the first three the first handful of soliloquies He's not knowing what to do. Here's at a middle point, and we're going to see the next couple. He's making up his mind. So it's really a middle point, uh, middle turning point in Hamlet's life here, Hamlet's thought process. Good, my lord, Ophelia, how does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. Hamlet's kind of ignoring her here, right? My lord, I have remembrance of yours that I have long, long to long, long to deliver. I pray you now, remembrance of it. These are the letters. I never gave you aught. He's denying Ophelia. He's treating her horribly here. Why, why, why is Hamlet denying her? Is it to keep her out of the fray? That's my argument. Uh, my honored, my lord, I have remembrance. My honored lord, you know right well you did, and with them words of so sweet breath, composes made these things more rich. Their perfume loss. Take these again, for to the noble mind. Ha, ha, are you honest? This is, this is, uh, you know, why is Hamlin asking, asking her this? My lord, are you fair? What means your lordship? What are you talking about, Hamlet? Why are you asking me these questions? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. Your modesty should permit no approach to your beauty. <laughs> Could beauty, my lord, have better commerce than with honesty? I truly, for the power of beauty, will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a bod. A bod here, procurer. Then the force of honesty can translate beauty into his likeness. This was sometime a paradox, but now the time gives it proof. I did love you once. Wow, that's so brutal. Why is Hamlet making this? I loved you once, but no longer. Why is he doing this? Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. For virtue cannot so inoculate our old stock, but we shall relish of it. I loved you not. Why is he, you know, graft our old stock? Why, why is he saying this? What, what is he doing? I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery, 
Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest. What is it? I, that's such a fascinating, indifferent, honest, moderately virtuous is the note, right? Moderately virtuous. But yet I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. It's better that I was never born. I am very proud. So Hamlet, though, l l listen to this. This is fascinating. He's treating Ophelia horribly, but he's also, he's being a little honest, you know. I am very proud. He is, right? Revengeful. He is. Ambitious, with more offenses at my beck, my beck and call, than I have thoughts to put them in imagination to give them shape, or time to act them in. What should such fellows as I do, crawling between heaven and earth? We are errant knaves all. Believe none of us. Men, right? Men. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Where is your father? So he's, he's kind of, Hamlet's raking himself over the coals too. Believe no one. You know, we are errant knaves all. Believe none of us. Believe no one. <laughs> Trust no one. Right? But he's being honest there though. By saying that. <laughs> yeah. Don't trust me. I'm being honest. Uh, at home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him that he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell. Oh, help him, you sweet heavens. Ophi you know, so Ophelia's free. Hamlet's acting wild here. If thou dost marry, I'll give thee this pla plague for, the, for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice. Why is, he, why is he putting Hamlet these invectives against Ophelia here? As pure as snow, thou shalt not escape calumny. You know, you shall have a lot of troubles. Get thee to a nunnery, go farewell, or if thou wilt needs marry, marry a fool. For wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. Horned beast cuckolds. To a nunnery, go and quickly too, farewell. Heavenly powers restore him. I have heard of your paintings well enough. God hath given you one face, and you make yourselves another. You jig and amble, and you lisp. You nickname God's creatures, and make your wantonness and ignorance. Go to, I'll know more on it. It hath made me mad. I say we will have no more marriage. Those that are married already, all but one shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. To an unary go. Hamlet's just really kind of trashing women here, too. He's he's thinking of his mom, though, Gertrude. If, you know, if Gertrude loved my father, and my father was a great man, and she throws him over for Claudius, who's this evil murderer, women, right? Hamlet, not a good model according to Hamlet. I mean, it's not, doesn't excuse how he treats Ophelia here. Here's Ophelia. There's a tragic moment. This is, this is uh, such a, uh, this is one of my favorite moments with Ophelia here, what she says. Oh, what a noble mind is here overthrown. The courtier's soldier, scholar's eye, tongue swore the expectancy in rose, the fair hope, of the fair state, the glass of fashion, and the mold of form, the observed of all observers, quite, quite down, and I, of ladies most deject and wretched, that suck the honey of his music vows. I love, you know, I, I suck the honey of his, those beautiful letters with the sweet entreaties. Now see that noble, most sovereign reason, like sweet bells jangled, out of time and harsh, that unmatched form and feature of blown youth, Blasted with ecstasy, madness, right? Hamlet was this beautiful, sweet, noble mind and has been overthrown with madness. He treats me horribly. That unmatched form and stature blown youth. I loved Hamlet and this is what it's come to. Ecstasy means the madness, blasted with madness here. Oh, woe is me. I have seen what I have seen. See what I see. Ophelia there. She's just in complete anguish and misery by how Hamlet has treated her. And I think we know, uh, my argument is Hamlet's doing it for a reason, but that doesn't excuse it. And we know what happens too. It, it's, and Hamlet feels doubly guilty, doubly guilty later. Uh, Claudius, his affections do not that way. His inclinations tend nor what he spake, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something in his soul. So the king, he's not a... There's something in his soul or which his melancholy sits on brood. There's one of our themes, right? And I do doubt the hatch. I fear the hatch and the disclose will be some danger. 
I don't know, King's like, something's up here. The King's like observing Hamlet, something's up here. It's not just Ophelia. Will be some danger which for to prevent I have in quick determination thus set down. He shall with speed to England. I'm going to get Hamlet the hell out of here before he causes a ruckus, right? I'm going to send Hamlet off for the and keep a watch on him. For the demand of our neglected tribute, happily the seas and countries different with variable objects shall expel this something settled matter in his heart. Whereon his brain still beating puts him thus from fashion to fashion. What think you on it? Here's Polonius, his plan. Again, you know, I, I keep talking about this. Polonius, to thine own self be true, be honest. And he's going to do some, some secret scrambling around here. It shall do well, but yet do I believe the origin and commencement of his grief sprung from neglect of love. How now, Phil? You need not tell us what Lord Hamlet said. We heard it all. My lord, do as you please. But if you hold it fit after the play... Let his queen mother all alone entreat him to show his grief. Let her be round, blunt, with him, and I'll be placed so please you in the ear of all their conference. If she find him not, does not find him out, to England send him, or confine him where your wisdom best shall think. I'm going to hide, and we're going to get to the bottom of this, to act. It shall be so. Madness and great ones must not on watch go. That's a fascinating, because Claudius respects and fears Hamlet's Hamlet here madness in great ones Hamlet's the great one must not be unwatched we must you know the Claudius doesn't think it's just Ophelia there's something going on here it's also the guilt he feels over murdering Hamlet's father 